Thank you so much to all the supporters that make this channel possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's JPEG Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing what we know about the newly announced Anvil Medium boarding ship, the Legionnaire. Since the Q&A has been released, I can now share my thoughts. In this review, I will give you a brief overview of the Legionnaire, go over its features, your purchase options, the Q&A thread, and give you my preliminary thoughts on the Legionnaire. This month's ship giveaway is the RSI Scorpius and a pair of Predator joystick mounts. Stay tuned to the end to learn how to enter. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Anvil Legionnaire JPEG and we're starting right now. The Anvil Legionnaire presents the civilian market with a military-style boarding vessel capable of occupying ships of varying sizes, crews, and capacities. High-performance jump seats safely transport a boarding party of up to 10 into the action, while integrated systems let your co-pilot bypass security protocols on the target vessel, mitigating risk like never before. When the operation calls for the rapid recovery of an enemy-occupied vessel or station, the Legionnaire is ready for duty. With eight drop seats, versatile docking options, and an advanced security infiltration system, even the most difficult boardings are viable with the Legionnaire in your fleet. We'll begin by going over its features. One of its more unique features is its ability to hack into enemy ships. This will allow its operators to stealthily disable security measures on the target vessel, allowing the boarding crew to dock, board, and seize the opposing vessel. The range of its hacking abilities are to be determined, However, we know that it will be relatively close, as in a few kilometers, not dozens or hundreds. The hacking capabilities of the Legionnaire are specific to being able to override the docking and air traffic control systems of the enemy ship. It will not be able to open or close the airlocks, disable self-destruct, or manipulate thrusters. The Legionnaire's hacking ability does in fact go both ways. There will be a hacking and counter-hacking gameplay if the intended target is a player vessel. However, if the target is an NPC vessel, the counter role is performed by the AI. The Legionnaire's hacking abilities are built in, so it will not take up any valuable blading capacity. Competing ships like the Sentinel can have this ability, but it will be at the cost of a blade slot. The Legionnaire includes a 2-in-1 docking collar. This allows it to dock to a wide range of vessels and facilities, and of course the UEE's standard apertures. The Legionnaire can do this regardless of if the enemy ship's shields are up. It can even lock on if the ship is in mid-flight. However, this will make things more complicated, so the slower the better. You will also need to ensure that you are aligned correctly, similarly to if you were docking the Merlin into Akani. So it looks like for the greatest chance of success, you will want to have another ship disable the enemy to ensure a successful dock. At this time, CIG does not have plans for entry through manned turrets so ships that don't have dedicated airlock entry points like the Hercules C2 will not be boardable. The Legionnaire comes with eight high-performance jump seats. It is unclear if someone wearing heavy armor will be able to fit in these seats. However, devs are working with the core gameplay team to ensure that if this is not possible, it can be equipped with a minimal impact for quick boarding. Unfortunately, there will be no dedicated seats for holding captured enemies. Breaching parties are sure to be well equipped with built-in lockers for heavy armor, heavy and special weapons, weapons, and breaching charges. They will also be able to deploy deployable cover as well to make their entry as safe as possible. Defensively, the Legionnaire has it all. It features triple shield generators, a military-grade armor synonymous with the Anvil name. It is designed to take a significant amount of fire on approach, very similar to the Anvil Terrapin. This is a welcome addition to a pilot who intends to protect its boarding crew from incoming fire. Offensively, the Legionnaire is equipped with two size 2 remote turrets, the foremost being slave to the pilot and the aft most being controlled by the co-pilot. These remote turrets will be equipped with two size 2 hardpoints each. I verified this by taking a look at the rear remote turret on the Cuddy Steel. It is also size 2. Let's discuss some of the technical specs. The Legionnaire will support a crew of two. That's one pilot and one co-pilot. The co-pilot will also take the role of the hacker and the second remote turret operator. We've already talked about the eight jump seats and the remote turrets. Utility-wise, it will come with a docking override hacking device. In case you were wondering if this is one item, I verified by inspecting the page's HTML code. Those three shields are size one, 
so we can expect the same shield performance that we get from the Nomad. The armor will be rated as heavy. This is hard to quantify until we get this feature in game, but just know that this is the highest level armor a ship can have. Its dimensions are as follows, 32 meters in length, 23.3 meters in width, and 10.2 in height. And as we can see, this is right in between the Anvil Valkyrie and Terrapin, although I suspect this to be wrong. Starship 42 hasn't updated the size as of this recording. Now that we know so much about it, let's see if it's worth the cost. At the time of writing this script, concierge can scoop up the Legionnaire with LTI and the Shadow Strike paint skin for a $100 Warbond. That's right, only $100. Everyone else can buy a Warbond without the skin for the same price. And if you use store credit, you can upgrade to the Legionnaire for $120. Typical with concept sales, there is no option to upgrade and get the Warbond price. Concierge can also pick up that Shadow Strike skin for $7. And lastly, the Legionnaire is available in a special pack, the Anvil Swarm Pack with the Anvil Arrow and Hawk for $250 Warbond and 208 standalone. Personally, I think this pack would be better if it had the Arrow and RSI Mantis, but that wouldn't fit the Anvil theme. Please note that you can upgrade any ship in this pack to another ship and pay the difference. It should be noted that this pack without the Warbond discount will save you $5, so it's not the greatest in forms of discounts. One really great thing to note is that if you purchase the Legionnaire, you will get a Hoplite as a loner until it releases. This is really awesome. You can get a very capable Heavy Fighter as a loner until the ship releases, and based on its required features, it's going to be quite a while. Before I go over my overall thoughts, let's just cover a few things from the Q&A that didn't make it into the feature list. What happens if the ship being boarded quantum jumps? Well, the Legionnaire will be able to jump with it. Nice. What hangar pad sizes will the Legionnaire use? And will it fit into the Polaris or Idris? Here they say that the Legionnaire will fit onto an extra small landing pad, making it able to fit in the Polaris 890 jump or either of the top two pads on top of the Anvil Liberator. Be sure to check out my Liberator JPEG Buyer's Guide here. For reference, here is the Legionnaire next to three ships that we know that maximize this extra small space. I'm sure Starship 42 will fix this. Does the Legionnaire have crew facilities? No. The ship is designed to complete the mission and return to base. Does the Legionnaire have any measures to disguise itself from early detection? No, it will rely on its shields, armor, and whatever support fleet you accompany with it. How maneuverable will the Legionnaire be compared to the Cuddy Steel, Prowler, Vanguard Hoplite, and Valkyrie? The maneuverability will be closer to the Steel, but this can of course change over time before or after the ship releases. That's it for the Q&A, we've already covered everything else. With all of that out of the way, here are my thoughts on the Legionnaire. I think the thing that has been obvious to me from the beginning is that the Legionnaire will not be a lone wolf ship. Its firepower will not have the capability of damaging components to cause a ship to shut down, especially not larger ships with docking collars. Distortion weapons may be able to, but it's unlikely to be effective. There's no EMP, no quantum stair or dampener. So in my opinion, I'd bring along a Cuddy Blue and Heavy Fighter along with the Legionnaire so that you'll be able to disable, board and seize almost any ship. Just to add more heavy fighters if needed. Because this will require a lot of people, I'd personally not board with a party higher than four, including the pilot and co-pilot. They can both board with the rest of the crew. They can then take and secure the bridge, and once the ship can be brought to a remote location, more crew from the rest of the fleet can assist in clearing. All right, so this is clearly a lot of work, Subliminal. Are you telling me I should keep away from the Legionnaire? Certainly not. First and foremost, having the Hoplite as a loner is great for someone who wants a top tier heavy fighter for cheap. This will obviously be temporary, however, I suspect that this ship is a long way out. For people thinking about this option, I would take it, I think it's a good idea. Another aspect we can look at the Legionnaire from is as a drop ship, not a boarding ship. Sure, it doesn't hold as many as the Cutty Steel, but you don't have that many friends who are willing to die anyway. It's gonna be far more durable, just as agile and will certainly come in a smaller, more stealthy package. Let's look at other competitors. The Prowler is expensive and gimmicky and may not be as stealthy because of its larger components. The Valkyrie is clearly designed for much larger operations and the Hoplite as a dropship is just blah. 
If this released today, it would be an excellent ship for getting a small precise squad into the AO to take out a group of targets. Its small size will allow you to land behind cover for bunker missions, and it has enough firepower to take out defense turrets. It only lacks a med bay, and it's not clear how much storage we will have for getting out loot. But if those aren't too important for the operation, I can't think of a better ship. And then there's the price. Can I tell you that when I saw 100 bucks, I was very surprised. Seemed like CIG could have gotten away with another $100, but don't tell them that. This month's ship giveaway is the RSI Scorpius and a pair of Predator joystick mounts. There are 11 ways to enter, each giving you more points and a greater chance to win. To enter, just visit subliminal.gg giveaway. Pro tip, the redeemed Twitch channel point rewards can be done once per live stream. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending out for UEC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminal.gg to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.